Hey guys, if you're looking to build a brushless whoop with the new B Core OmniOS F3 board, there's going to be some other parts you're going to need to actually put this together in addition to the board. And I'm just going to go over this quick video here and how I put this together and all the parts I uh, had to uh, gather up to actually build this. So I'll put the complete parts list in the description below. Obviously, you're going to need the uh, B Core OmniOS F3 board. This is the board right here. And this is the one that basically powers the, the whole uh, whoop. You get uh, these for um, a 4 in 1 ESC with brush for the brushless motors. You get a Betaflight OSD board, so it's got it's an Omnibus F3 target. Uh, it's got the MPU uh, 6000 gyro on here. Uh, it's the same size board as you see in all the typical tiny whoops. I think it's about a 30 by 30 size board. And uh, yeah, there's a you don't get a whole lot with this board. You get uh, a, a micro low C power connector and you get some uh, uh, connectors for the motor uh, motors here that you can solder on if you want. It's optional. Uh, I elected to solder on my motors directly and then you get a buzzer which I didn't use. Uh, but in order to actually put this together you're obviously going to need a frame to put this in and they uh, don't carry these frames on Banggood. They carry the board on Banggood but not the frames. I picked up a lot of the other parts from for this build from Amazon. Uh, this is the uh, Beta uh, FPV 75 Pro frame. So they have, you know, Beta FPV makes a bunch of tiny whip type frames and parts and actual like ready to flies and stuff like that. This one here is for the uh, 0703 and 0705 motors. It's got the, the hole pattern for the um, three holes on, for the motors on uh, for that particular size. And that's what I use here. I, I had some Racer Star uh, 07, 03, 20,000 kV motors. I decided to use those. And you can see they just mount on the bottom here like so. Uh, the uh, flight controller doesn't come with the little rubber grommets that go on the, the four standoffs here to mount the flight controller to the frames. And the frame doesn't come with it either. So you actually have to get the little rubber grommets. They come with the canopy, which is kind of odd. Uh, I have have the this pink set of uh, parts here, the canopy and the props from a, uh, I think it was a King Kong Tiny Seven. It's a, um, you can actually get this canopy from Crazy Pony on Amazon. Uh, although they don't come in pink, they come in white and yellow. And same with the props. Uh, if you want to get this color, you have to uh, actually pick up uh, the King Kong Tiny Seven, and they have spare parts in that particular kit. Uh, and those are the same ones you can pick up from Amazon. But those were this is where I got the props and the canopy, but the same parts you can get from Amazon, just they only come in white and yellow. And then the little rubber grommets come with the canopy. So you need to get the little rubber grommets and stick them in the little, little half holes here. And then you would mount that to the frame with the four screws. And it just slides on and then there's like some, there's a, two screws you're going to need uh, on the front and the back that's going to mount the board. And then the two the other two screws you're going to use to actually mount the board and the canopy. So when you're actually building this, you're going to mount the board first with the front and back screws. And then when you once you're actually finished putting everything together, you're going to use the final two screws on the left and the right to mount the canopy, and that secures the, the final two screw spots for the board. But before you can mount the board in here to the frame, you got to install your receiver. And I actually have a little micro fly sky receiver here, so actually. It's just stuck to the bottom of the board, so like in this particular position right here, and they have the antenna just kind of sticking out forward. Um, you got to do that first, so you have to solder on your. There's uh, three three uh, spots to solder on your receiver on the board, and then you just use some double-sided foam tape to solder the receiver to the uh, flight controller. And then at that point, I mounted the flight controller to the frame, and then I I, I then individually. Uh, mounted the motors to the uh, frame and then soldered the motor wires to the flight controller. And I actually, now I think about it, I probably should have gone about this a little bit differently. Um, probably instead of having the motor wires come up on top, so the motor wires come up and then they kind of come up the side here and they solder onto the top of the, the board, I should have probably had the wires come, the wires come underneath here and use a little bit of tape to secure to one of these little legs and then should have the wires come up and then through the uh, on the outer side of this uh, prop guard and then up into the back bottom either the bottom side of the board or the top side of the board so that the basically just to keep the wires away from the props 
I did kind of mount the prop props a little bit higher so they're not quite down as far as they could be because I wanted to avoid the the motor wires and so that's uh, probably one thing that I if you if you were to build this uh, yourself I would probably recommend going underneath the prop guard instead of on top of the prop guard like I did. The other thing that was uh, that you're going to need that that obviously doesn't come with the frame or the flight controller is you're going to need one of these uh, pH uh, 2.0 connectors here for your battery. And that's because I'm using uh, this GMB 450 battery that happens to just fit perfectly in this little slot here. It's actually this uh, frame is designed for these batteries and they all come with the uh, uh, pH 2.0 connector so you're going to need to pick up this as well. And then I happen to have a video transmitter camera combo like one of those they're separated already. Uh, there's a lot of them out there. I'll just put a few of them in the description. I just happen to have one lying around and I just happen to use that and it sticks inside this canopy just uh, totally fine. Basically you just stick the video transmitter to the top of the flight controller and then there's a small slot here for the camera that goes inside the canopy so and then the antenna sticks out the back. Uh, but that's pretty much the whole build. It's um, uh, I think the, the, the hardest part is soldering the motor wires to the flight controller but the rest of it is fairly easy uh, soldering your uh, camera to the uh, uh, flight controller. You have to use the video in and video out to get the OSD and then uh, soldering your receiver. So I think the motor uh, motor wires are the most difficult. Okay so just getting a quick weight measurement here and this one this will comes in at about uh, 25.6 grams and then if you throw on the the battery that I'm using it's coming in at about 38.4 grams. Now in terms of the uh, flight time I'm getting, I'm getting about two minutes of flight time on this 450, give or take, depending on how, how aggressive I am on the throttle. Um, I would recommend actually going with the 15,000 kV motors instead of the 20,000 kV motors. You do get a little bit more power and acrobatic ability with the 20,000 kV motors. Um, however, I think that the higher kV motors do draw more current than uh, than the lower KV motors. So if you're looking for more flight time, I'd recommend going for the 15,000 KV motors. If you're looking for more speed and acrobatics, go for the 20,000 KV motors. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'll show you a little bit of flight footage, a little bit of outdoor flight footage and indoor flight footage. This flies pretty well uh, in both uh, conditions and actually in outdoor conditions with the setup it, in pretty windy conditions, it flew totally fine. Um, you might not be able to tell from the video, but it was actually pretty windy that day that I was flying outside. So this little bigger whip here with the brushless setup is able to handle winds a lot better than the, uh, the t smaller six millimeter motor uh, brushed uh, tiny whips that are out there that pretty much get blown out of the way in any kind of windy conditions outside. So if you're looking to fly outside this might not be a bad way to go.